chapter 1. Daniel chapter 1. I know we start a little bit late. We had a couple of things here, so we're a little bit later. We didn't start late. We started on time. Daniel chapter 1. We're going to read a few verses here. We started a series two weeks ago. Of course, brother, um, we had brother, um, I was going to say Benefield. I knew it wasn't brother Benefield. Brother Rupel, our missionary to uh, Cambodia. By the way, fantastic message last week. That was that was phenomenal. You ever hear things and you hear about Christians in other countries and you hear about what they go to and sometimes I think, man, am I even saved? I understand, you know, <clears throat> here he is getting ready to preach and here's a girl that says, my family's not here because they couldn't take the beating that they're going to get. Wish I could take their beating for them. How does, how does that make you feel when you're the one that's going to get up and preach? Okay, um, so... First of all, let let us re, let, let that remind us to pray for our missionaries and pray for those. Um, and let's be thankful for the freedom we do have and let's not take it for granted. But that was a tremendous message and challenged, challenged us last week. Daniel chapter 1 and verse 8. We're not going to read the whole chapter. I'm going to, we read and we'll, we'll review what we talked about last week for like two minutes. <clears throat> Go through the story. Daniel chapter 1, let's look at verse 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now, God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. The prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king who hath pointed your meat and your drink. For why should he see your face faces worse liking than the children which are of your sort? Then shall ye make me endanger my head to the king. Then said Daniel to Melzar, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over David, uh, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days. Let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Then let our countenances be looked upon before thee, and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat. And as thou seest, deal with thy servants. So he consented unto them in this matter and proved them, Ten days. And at the end of ten days, their countenances appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Thus Melzar took away their portion of their meat and the wine which they should drink and gave them pulse. And as for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill and all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the days that the king had, had said he would bring them in. Then the prince of eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. And the king communed with them. And among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. And in all manners of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, and here's what I want you to hear, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in his realm. And Daniel continued even under the first year of King Cyrus. Let's pray. Father, thank you again for this evening. Thank you for this time we have. Uh, help us to get the truths that you want us to get this evening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. By way of remembrance and review, of course, we're in the book of Daniel. And um, the prophets had seen, foreseen a time coming when the children of Israel, the whole nation, uh, 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 would be taken into cap captivity. Of course, the, the northern kingdom had been taken into captivity a little bit earlier than, the, than, than Judah and them, but they saw that day coming because of their disobedience to God. Finally, complete judgment came in the form of Nebuchadnezzar. He came and he, he, took, he, he took control of them and basically carried many of them off captives. He ruined their land and only left a handful of people behind. Um, King Nebuchadnezzar's policy was to take some of the youngest, the brightest, and the sharpest, and he would bring them back with him, with the other captives, and he would try to uh, uh, use them and integrate them into their, uh, into their inner court and, and, and uh, kind of as a way of appeasing the other captives there and try to set the trend and, and, and make them feel comfortable being in their new land. Among these were Daniel and his three friends, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Of course, we understand them as uh, uh, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, when they went in there, they knew that, that some of their 
beliefs, some of their God-given beliefs, convictions were going to be challenged, uh, particularly in the area of the things that they would eat and drink. And so they knew that ahead of time, so they kind of set themselves up. They were going to go into a training. The training here was going to be three years. Then at the end of three years, they were going to stand before, literally before King Nebuchadnezzar. History tells us, uh, I think Nebuchadnezzar may have come to know the Lord. We see that later on in Daniel. But uh, history tells us that before that, he was a very, very brutal king. And uh, he would you'll see some of that in a couple of stories we're going to look at in a couple of weeks too. But these men were not going to compromise. And so you saw the story here. <clears throat> they did not want to partake of the wine and the diet, so they, 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 came to, uh, they came to the head of the eunuchs there, and they said, listen, uh, can we do a little, uh, can, could you prove us here? We'll eat something different. And then at the end of that, check us out and see if, if you know, if everything's okay. The, 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 the head of the eunuchs, uh, his goal was for them to be healthy and, and in good shape. And so Daniel said, well, why don't you try our way for a few days and then see if we're not as healthy as you want us to be. And if we are, then let us, you know, basically keep on that way. And they did. <clears throat> what we saw at the end is, at the end of their training, their diet proved to be better. And God was with them and blessed them in a great way. And when they stood before King Nebuchadnezzar, he noticed something different about these four young men. The Bible tells us he looked at these men and said, hey, they are four times better. I, I'm sorry, ten times better than the others that were in that program. Now, what I want you to notice about these men, these were men that, that lived their convictions. We saw that two weeks ago. They didn't compromise because of the fact they were in another land and that they were being pressured to do these things. They found a way, in this particular instance, they were able to do it peaceably to live their convictions. They didn't compromise. By the way, if you read the verse... Uh, uh, Ashpenaz, I think the, is his name, he, he said, listen, there are others that are in this program after this sort, and, and they're eating the diet. Well, there's other Jews, but they compromised what they did. They compromised their beliefs. They just kind of went with the flow. But Daniel and his three friends did not, and they were the ones that were ten times better. Let me say this. No individual will ever be seen as being ten times better by conforming and compromising. It's only when we confront society, we confront what's before us with conviction. That's what makes us different. Last time we saw that if they wanted to compromise, there was a very easy path that was set before them that would have allowed them very easily just to be like everybody else and to slip in to the things and just do what everybody else could do. But Daniel, Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael didn't want that path. They wanted the ten times better path. And so they stood by their convictions. The other path would have been the easiest but they decided to do the right thing. So how do we become ten times better? Well, they had convictions that they lived. How does this take place? How can this take place in our life? You see, what this world needs, they need to see Christians who are different. By the way, you live out in the world, you work out in the world, people say things. They make little comments, and I get that. They criticize. But do you know there's one thing that they can't argue with, Brother Bichardo? They can't argue with the product. Eventually, they're going to see that. Oh, they'll mock. They'll say things. But when you have a great marriage, and they're on their third or fourth marriage, they see that there was a better way, even if they didn't personally take it themselves. The ten times better way. But people don't see that if we want to be just like them. Why is it that many of the ills that are in our society affect people that say they're Christians almost to the same extent as to those that don't claim to be Christians? Because Christians are living just like the unsaved. There's no difference. And so the same things happen to us as happens to them. But there are some ingredients that can help us to have a life that is ten times better. There's seven of them. I'm going to give them to you quickly. We will not be here long. But I want us to get them because I think that's going to help us tonight. 
first of all, if we're going to have a ten times better life, there must be an inward purpose. There must be an inward purpose. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8 says this, but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. You see, the battle as to whether or not Daniel would compromise like the other Jewish captives would and did, that battle for Daniel was fought before they ever put a plate of the food in front of him that he was not supposed to eat. The battle was fought. Daniel knew, and his friends, but I'm going to, I'll use Daniel's name for sake of time, they knew that, that there were some things they were going to face in Babylon, particularly because they were chosen specifically by Nebuchadnezzar's men to be part of that, that upper echelon group. Maybe if they were just captives that were brought into the a land, they would have faced some things, but they were just living in the land. But these guys were very specific. They had a very specific program they were going to push them through. Remember we said last week, their goal was to, to get them to conform to the Babylonian society. They wanted them to... Con- conform to the Babylonian worship. That's why their names that are changed aren't just different names. They're names that are attached to different Babylonian gods. And so Daniel, they they knew this was coming. So you know what they did? They had already purposed in their heart what they're going to do. They didn't wait until something was put before them that this is something God doesn't want us to be a part of and they have to sit there and think, are we going to do it or are we not going to do it? They already decided a long time ago, here's what's right, here's what's wrong, and if we're faced with it, the decision is already made. Most people don't live like that. You see, if we wait until a situation comes up before we decide what we will do, then there will be some outside factors that will help to influence and put pressure on that decision, and the decision might be, made that's not right because we didn't make it ahead of time. Purpose. That's what, when we talk about convictions, what are we talking about? We're talking about things that we believe from the Word of God, and if it's in the Word of God and we believe it, the decision's made. We're not going to like, well, you know, should I do that? The Bible says no. I already know the Bible says no. So the answer is no. Purpose. We talked about that this morning when we talked the importance about the inward out life. If the inside is right, the outside will be right. We must live by purpose. If not, our emotions will help us make decisions. And our emotions are a bad way to make decisions. Our outside outside influence will become involved and there will be that pressure that will push us. As I mentioned last week, whenever you feel pressured about a decision, don't make one. Don't let pressure push you the wrong direction. The stuff, the tough decisions that laid ahead of them were not that tough after all. By the way, as you look through the first few chapters, this is probably the easiest this is probably the easiest battle they were facing. Okay? This battle was about food. But there is a battle that ended up with people in the fire. Some of Daniel in the lion's den. You see, we live in a world that's very, very, very convictionless. People don't want to have that kind of mentality. We don't, because when you have convictions, you stand out. Not because you're trying to be mean, and we'll get to that in a minute. Just because there's so many people that don't have convictions. I'm sure they looked at them and said, what's the big deal? There's other Jews. That's what happens. We live in a society now where, where, Used to be people could disagree about things. There was a, 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 a battle of ideas, and it wasn't nearly a battle, just we believe this and you believe that. Okay, well, we'll, well, now our society, and if you don't catch it, you better catch it very quickly. It's, it's to where if you, don't, if you don't agree with a particular view society has, you're shouted out or you're put out. It's happening. Many years ago I saw a video someone put together. It was called uh, Expelled. It was a Jewish guy. The guy's Jewish. You know what I'm talking about? He, he's Jewish, not even Christian. And he, he did these, he went and give, this documentary was about our public universities where some scientists are starting to question evolution. They're not necessarily believing in, in, uh, in our personal God, but they're understanding that, uh, uh, that there was, there, that, that, that basically we were created. We're not here, we, oh, they call it special design, I think they call. We, we're not here on, on, on accident. 
And he did, in this little video we watched, this documentary, they're losing their jobs if they don't tow the evolution line. I thought science was about finding the truth. It's not. Science comes from a pre -dis, pre, uh, preconceived notion that evolution is it, and you're not allowed to question it. I read a story this week. There was a, a famous weatherman in, in, in France. Just it happened this week. He's, he's the most well-known. He's, uh, he's on their national news network, their national television network. He lost his job because he had the audacity to question global warming. I don't believe in global warming, although this October it is kind of hot. But, but, listen, but, okay, he disagrees with it based on the facts as he's seeing it. Instead of there being a disagreement, it's like, that's a political thing, you're out. That's why Christians don't want to say anything about our beliefs. You get shouted down. Hey, what's going to happen if it comes to the point in our country, and by the way, in some sectors it already has, if you believe a certain way, you'll lose your job. Can I just tell you, tell, to, let, let me ask you, are you going to still believe the right way? Convictionless society. Daniel was not convictionless. Daniel was ten times better because he had an inward purpose. But number two, an inward purpose will lead us naturally to point number two. There must be an outward avoidance. Because he purposed in his heart, it says that therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now I want you to notice the key word there. The key word there is defile. Daniel saw the specific in this instant diet and, and what they wanted them to do was a violation of God's laws for them. And he saw it, that is, if he gave in, he would be defiling himself. Let me say this. Having convictions is one thing, but they're going to be put to the test. Believing something is the start, but let me just tell you this. It's going to boil down to outward actions. It's going to be tested. You see, we hear all the time, especially among the unsaved with Christians, what's the big deal? Why are you against that? What, what is the big deal about this? Come on. It's a big deal if God says it's a big deal. It's a big deal if it's about violating what we believe God says. That's a big deal. People don't see it that way. And I can, let me say this. I can understand if an unsaved person doesn't understand it. I can understand, I believe, Espinaz here, if he came and said, you know, I don't quite get these guys. I don't, what's the big deal about eating, you know, a little bacon or whatever it was they were going to eat there? It might have been some food that was, that, that wasn't, you know, that maybe their eating was involved with worship. That, that some believe that was part of it. It's, what's the, it's just food. Come on, what's a big deal? They, they don't see it from God's point of view. It doesn't, I, I get it sometimes when the unsaved don't understand the principles of God's word. I get that. But you know what bothers me? Christians are changing what they believe. You ever heard this before? Well, you know, I know so-and-so, they're a Christian, and, and, and they don't believe like you. They don't believe. But at, over at my church, we, we don't, we, that's okay. To get up and say marriage is a man and woman, there's churches that won't say that anymore. They won't do it. Well, you know, after all, God is love. And I think God's love is more important than that issue. Now, we're going to talk about this in a minute. The Bible is taken as a whole. You don't, seg se you don't segment it. Kind of quiet in here. You, you, know, you know why it's quiet? Because you're hearing this stuff all over the place and you're afraid to say something. I'll just be real honest with you. It's okay. This is church. Marriage is a man and a woman. Okay. I'm trying to be... Oh, you're homophobic. I'm not afraid of them. I'm afraid of anybody. I think drinking, I think drinking is a sin. Am I alcohol am I alcophobic? That's something they came up with to shut you up. By the way, Brother Ray, I, I don't even comprehend this. How can it be controversial to say there's there's there you're either one of two things? You're either a man or a woman. I read an article by a Jewish man. He's, he's, he's very conservative. He has a blog. There's some school or something, and 
And it's not just now male, female, and transgendered. They said that they had like nine different things you could be. Nine? That ultrasound's going to be a little tricky. Nine? You see, they're going to keep pushing. There's a guy that thinks he's a parrot. He lives in England. He had his ears removed. How many of you know what I'm talking about? He had his ears removed because parrots don't have ears. He did something to his face so he looks like a parrot. He's, uh, he's like category number nine. And I'm, I don't mean to get off on that, but I do. The point is, they keep pushing. What you believe is going to be put to the test. And it was put to the test. There's things we're going to have to avoid. Be very careful. Your beliefs will be challenged. They will. They will. You say, well, how do you react? Give me a couple minutes. We'll get to that point. Number three. It's, well, actually, we'll get to that point right now. Here we go. Number three. There must be a loving compassion. Now you say, oh, you're being contradictory. You said marriage is a man or woman. You said that gender. That's not mean. Truth isn't mean-spirited. People just don't like it. If you don't like it, I, I can't help you with that. Okay, it, it's the Bible. I mean, I didn't write it. If I wrote it, there, if I, look, if I wrote the Bible, it would probably be like 30 words and there would be a lot of pictures. There wouldn't be much in there. Okay, it, it just, it would, you know. God wrote the Bible. But let's, let, let me strike the balance because this is a missing in a lot of, uh, in a lot of individuals I, I know, some of the guys I went to school with. Verse 9, now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. Some of the brethren I know would read that and say he was a liberal. There's a balance in everything. Now, if some people don't like us and they get upset with us for our beliefs, I'm not going to change what we believe. That's just, I hate to say it, that's just tough luck. Deal with it the best you can. I'm not going to purposely be mean-spirited to people, though. See, sometimes don't, people don't believe to, don't, don't react to what we believe. They react to how we act. Sometimes we do things in a very unchristian way. Many years ago, I heard David Gibbs preach. And he said, and this is back when, you know, Christians used to battle a lot of this nonsense that's coming into our society instead of now just rolling over and letting it come. But he said they'd have to go to, 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 they'd have to, go to court on certain things. He said one thing that used to turn the judges against them, and he had to get these, some pastors and Christians, is just don't act like an idiot. He says, let's present our case. We're going to win. I mean, the Constitution is still the Constitution, although Obama's trying to change that for us. He says, but let's not go in there and, look, people, you know people are human sometimes. Daniel... Because he was top-notch, he was, they liked him. And so now there's a balance there when he comes before him and says, listen, I have a situation, I don't want to get you in trouble, but I can't do this. That's what you call a balance. You know, some, some Christians think their goal in life is to be hated. Remember those evangelists, and his little monarch used to be the most hated man in America, and he, he, that, he wore that proudly. Now, if they hate us because of what we believe, because Jesus said there will be some. But look at, let me read the verse to you. Proverbs 16, 4. If you didn't know God wrote this, you'd think that, you'd think that, that old Joel Osteen wrote it. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his, men, his enemies to be at peace with him. Oh, well, what about Jesus? Jesus said that we'll be hated. Remember what I said earlier? The Bible isn't just one verse. The Bible is a, is a uh, I was going to use the word preponderance. I don't even know what it means. It just sounds good. It's a preponderance of words. I say, what does that mean? It means that I, I heard something somewhere and I, I want to be smart. 
the Bible is taken as a whole. You understand that? We ought to seek to be like Daniel so that, that, that people don't dislike us because of the way we act. And if there is an issue, let it be because of what we believe. Sometimes we're just very sour. So, so if we do what we can, we will have better relationships with people. Now, there may be a time and there are some people that that's not going to work. Okay, there's a balance there. We are not just supposed to have the right beliefs. We're supposed to have the right spirit about it. I think sometimes we chase people away because we're just flat out mean and rude. Now, we're going to have passions about, we're not going to get up here. I'm not going to talk like Joel Osteen's wife. Okay, she ain't preaching here. I mean, well, look, look at, we believe fervently what the Bible says. But we also love people fervently like the Bible says. Daniel wasn't out looking for a fight. Daniel, had a, he was under this man, and he was such a good, he wasn't an employee per se, but he worked under this man, and he was doing the best he could. And that was noticed. But there came a time when he had to stand up, and he went about it the right way. You may be asked to do something at your work that would violate your belief system. You know what you do? lovingly talk to your boss and just say, I can't do that. I'm sorry. Now, what most of us do, go there and say, you know what? You're a heathen. I'm not a liar. You want to be a filthy liar? Go right ahead. Do you think that's going to put them on guard? Just let them know. I can't do that. Now, if push comes to stuff, then say, you know what? I ain't changing what I believe. But sometimes we get ourselves in trouble. Here's some verses a lot of people don't like. I struggle with these myself sometimes. Pray for me. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering. Okay, this is tough. Gentleness. I ain't changing baby's diapers. That phase of my life is over. Okay, my children... Don't need diapers anymore. The grandchildren do, but I ain't doing it. Goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Temperance means, you know, strength under control. Against such there is no law. That sounds like relationship building principles. You know, we're supposed to be that. That's not me, Brother Pichardo. Naturally, that's not me. It's not. That's not Brother Pineda. It's not Brother Joseph. It's, 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 it's the fruit of the Spirit, though. As we grow in our faith, the Spirit of God develops that in our life. What the struggle is for us, we think it's either or. We either have to stand for the truth and have our convictions, or we got to live by the fruit of the Spirit. There, there's no contradiction there. You can do both. Now, you'll see, worship or go in the fire. I ain't going and I'm not worshiping. Don't pray. Go to the lion's den. I'm praying. But I think we need to have the right spirit sometimes. There's got to be a loving compassion. Now let me say this before we move on. In Christianity, see, you always have the, the flips, of the, the spectrum goes all the way over there, but it also goes over here. See, modern Christianity believes this. Let's be likable. Dude. You know, just hey. Let's just chill together. Go to church. We'll have a cool time. Everything will be hip. Oh, that's the kind of music you want? Cool. We'll do that. Not going to talk about anything controversial. When I, when I talk about marriage, I won't define it. See, we think if we try to be likable and back off of what we believe, we will win the world to Christ. But let me say this. When you try to be likable by backing off on what you believe, you will not win the world to Christ. The world will walk all over you because they push and they push and they push. And I'm not trying to be mean, and this isn't something I'm kicking. I'm not kicking a dead horse. If you want to kick a dead horse, go to McDonald's. That's where you get the meat. But, but you know, it's, this, it's just about love. That's all. 
that's all this marriage between a man and a man and a woman. They just love each other. Shouldn't they be able? And as soon as they got that, as soon as they got that, all of a sudden it's about gender inclusiveness. Houston just is voting on, on, on a bathroom ordinance. Because it's like you can go into whatever bathroom you want. I don't want any guy going to the bathroom where my daughters are. Or I'm going to go in the bathroom too. And I'm not going to use it. A baseball player, Lance Berkman. I don't know much about him. I remember him. I like him, though. He made a commercial. He got, got up and said, I don't want any guy going into the bathroom with my wife and my daughters in there. And the lesbian mayor of Houston went off. That's common sense, man. If you're a man and you think you're a woman, I feel sorry for you. But that doesn't mean you need to go into a woman's bathroom. Either go into the man's bathroom or go into the forest. Okay? And that's mean-spirited and controversial. It's common sense. And I'm violating everything I just said about love and compassion. But we think if we back off, look at they're going to, you know what it's going to be? Now it's going to be two men and two guys can be a marriage. Three girls and one guy. Five of you, it's good. They're, they're never going to stop. They're going to keep pushing. That's what the world does. We've got to stand up right here. Okay. Number four. I like this too. There must be a provable witness. I'll hustle on the last couple. Now, 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 Verses 10 through 12, what happens is Daniel goes, and I like what he says in verse number 12. He says, prove thy servants. I beseech thee, 10 days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink, and then let our countenances be looked upon before thee. The countenance of the children that eat the portion of the king's meat, and as thou seest, deal with thy servants. You know what he said? He said, I'll tell you what I'll do. He says, I know what your goal for us is, and, 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 I, and I, what he's Daniel saying is, I believe our way is a better way. So I'll tell you what you can do. I want to make you fill at ease because Ashman has his, his head's on the line if those guys start, start looking like they're not healthy. He says, I'll tell you what, give us 10 days. Try us. <clears throat> we'll do our diet. Those guys can do their diet. And in 10 days, you check us out and you see how we are. You know why he did that? Now listen to this. This is important. Nothing else I've said today is this is. Daniel not only had the conviction that God's way was right. Now listen to this. He believed it was better. Sometimes, especially you teenagers, when you hear the things that we believe, you think that, well, I just, you know, I know it's just a conviction. We just got to do it. I'm missing out. You're not missing out. God's way isn't just right. It's better. You're buying the lie. You know what you're like? You're like the kid who has to do piano practice. The little boy, uh, years ago, when we were in, a, when I was in grade school, they showed us a movie about Tchaikovsky. The, uh, I, I don't even remember this, the, the little the piano guy, right? He was a composer, did, did classical music and so forth. I, I remember in the movie, uh, his parents are making him practice piano as a child, and he's looking out the window, and there are his buddies out playing, and he's like, why am I in here playing the piano when they're out playing? I don't want to do that. I want to be out there. I'm being forced to do something I don't want to do. That's how a lot of Christians look at Christianity. That's how they look at the commands of the Bible. I am missing out by not being able to do what, what people who say they're Christians are, do and, and people who aren't saved do, and I'm missing out on life. Let me just tell you something. You're missing out on nothing. Daniel's way wasn't just right. It was better. God's way isn't just right. It's better. The best life you could ever live is the life that's marked by this book. It's better. Don't buy the lie. Daniel had no problem saying, prove us for 10 days. You know why? Because he knew they'd be just fine. That's why teenagers, they get, out, they, they, they get out of school and like, well, now I'm free. I'm out of the school. I can go do whatever I want. You can do whatever you want, but you're choosing a way that is not better. You lose. Oh, but no, I get to do what I want. I can stay out there. I can do all this, all that. You lose. I got my freedom. No, that's, that's sin. That's bondage. You lose. God's way is better. That would be a good conviction to come to. 
Don't you think God knows what's best? I, I just have a sneaking suspicion that he does. Let me give you a couple verses. 1 John 5, 3. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. <laughs> I can go off right there. Oh, you know, it's okay. It doesn't Look, God's more concerned about his love for you than, than that you obey him. Oh, this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. It's like they go together. But I like this phrase. And it's, this is 1 John 5, 3. You can read it later. And his commandments are not grievous. They don't cause pain. Oh, brother. You, you know, some, some people, just to look at them, discourages you from ever living for God. It's like, man, if that's what serving God does to you, I don't want to have anything to do with it. Well, brother, I, I'm remaining faithful to the end. Get over it. You're doing something. There is something drastically wrong. If you're serving God, there's a joy. There's an excitement. There's something good going on. You're not, you're, you know, I'm just, I know I'm not, I'm not, I'm missing out all this stuff, but I just love God. Man, get over that. Serving God's great. It's the best thing you could ever do. Let me just give you a couple more verses. Psalm 119, verse 127 to 128. David kind of got a hold of this thing. Therefore, I love thy commandments I love above gold. Yea, above fine gold. He goes, man, I would rather have God's commandments. I love them more than silver, gold, you name it, any prosperity you could give us. Therefore, I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. Uh, let me move on. Uh, next, there must be an ethical excellence. I'm going to give you these last two very quickly. I'm sorry we're a little longer than normal, but um, we'll be fine. Verse 20, and in all manners of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians, astrologers that were in all his realm. In their training, in their position, in their, as it were, job that they did, in their life, in everything involved in this three-year program, they were just better in every single way. Just better. Don't just boil your life down to Christianity. It's just Jesus. You go to work, you're a lazy bum. I'm not telling you to do that. I'm just saying. Can I just tell you something? If you are a Christian, you ought to be the best worker at your, at your job. You ought to be the best worker at your job. Isn't that what Christ makes us? You say, man, I want to be a better, I want to be a better husband or wife. Live for God. Live for God. I don't make you a better husband and wife. I mean, we have, we have messages you can listen to, you know. Uh, you know, the, we, we have things that help with marriage, books to read and all that stuff. But I'll just be honest with you, too. If you just follow the book, you'd be a better spouse. I want to be a better parent, be a better Christian. It's not that difficult. Ethical. Excellence. Everything we do will be better if, we ha if we're a Christian of conviction. Everything will just be better. And it will be noticeable. Oh, oh, people may not like it because it irritates them. You know people criticize you at work and call you Holy Joe or whatever they call you, altar boy. You know, uh, if you're a lady, Mar uh, Mother Teresa, whatever they call you. You know Why? Because when they see what you do, it pricks at their conscience. And they, if they can tear you down, it makes them feel better about themselves. And by the way, you're not helping them by bringing your level down. Stand right. Because there will be a time that they need something in their life, and you know what they're going to think? They're not going to think, man, I need help in my life. Uh, hey, let me go talk to so-and-so over here. You know, the guy who's on drugs, he's an alcoholic. I think he can help me. The guy that cusses like a sailor, sailor and all that, I think he can help. No, 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 no. When that push comes to shove, they're going to go find the one that, you know God, right? I'm going through a tough time here. And then the last thing is this. There must be a continued faithfulness. What does it say about Daniel? Verse 21. And Daniel continued even unto the first year of King Cyrus. You see why Daniel was there. Daniel must have been taken 
he was taken captive, we're pretty sure, that first wave. So he was there pretty much that whole time. He was taken as a youth. He was there that whole 70 years. During that time, there were several kingdoms that were in charge. Babylonian fell. Nebuchadnezzar fell. But you know what you find? No matter who was in charge, no matter who the boss of the, the king was, Daniel was always right there front and center with them. They just noticed something different about Daniel. Daniel was the same. I believe the last one was, king, was Cyrus. He was the same with Cyrus as he was with the first one, Nebuchadnezzar. All those many years, Daniel didn't change a bit. He continued. Can I just tell you something? Christianity is not something you grow out of. You know, there's a lot of use to Christians. Well, I used to go to church. I used to be a Christian. I used to do that kind of stuff. You say, what kind of Christian are you? I'll tell you how you can tell. I'll answer that question. If you want to come ask me what kind of Christian you are, I'll give you one prerequisite, and then you can ask me. You ready? Come back in 10 years. You know, we have too many mushroom Christians. People ask, oh, do you like mushrooms? I have this principle of life, Brother Bichardo. I don't eat anything that grows on my lawn overnight. Not going to do it. Now, if pizza grew like that, I'd be in. Pop up all of a sudden and then wham, just as soon it's gone. It's something that continues in your life. No, you know, I was on, look, if there, is there a time that you were on fire for God and now you're just kind of hanging on by a thread? Starting to back off of some of the things you know are right, you used to have convictions about? Not Daniel. By the way, although Daniel was in charge, he always faced it. He was always right there. That pagan society was there. That pressure was there. But you know what? Daniel stood in the face of it. And he stayed for all those many years until the end of his life. We don't need Christians that are here one day and gone the next. Well, how's your life tonight? You know what? I want to have a ten times better life. I've seen enough Christians. I've been here the whole time, 28 years. We're coming up, 28. This will be our 28th year. I've seen them. Brother Panay, you've been here longer. You guys have been here. You've seen them. You know, it just pays to serve God. But that serving him comes only by having the conviction and realizing it's the best thing you can do. And don't hedge on it. Let's stand together tonight.